can you please comment regarding Kevin Gianni's recent interview with Sh Susan Schenk about her experiences why she didn't do well on a raw vegan diet. Okay, let's get into it. Firstly, Susan Schenk, I listened to the interviews, Kevin Gianni, great guy, did some good interviews. So I listened to the interviews of Susan Schenk and she said she was 99% vegan. 99% vegan. Susan Schenk's starting to sound like Leah Keith. The, the lady who says, I was a vegan for 20 years, but I binged on eggs and dairy every chance I got. Hey, hey, just to clarify, vegan means you're a vegan. It doesn't mean you go and eating burgers and you know beef burgers and eggs on the side and call yourself, well, I'm mostly a vegan. And then when you run into problems, you blame plants, but you're eating animal products anyway. So you weren't even a vegan. So that's like me saying, I was in uh, Australia and I had a bit of a problem with customs. But I was in New Zealand. You know what I mean? You either were vegan or you weren't. Please be accurate, people. Please be accurate. That means, but I think if you want 100% results, it's good to do things 100%. It's just like saying I had a car accident and I was 99% on the right side of the road. Next point is uh, Susan said she had a high carbohydrate diet, but if we look at what Susan actually did, did eat, it was a very high fat diet. There's lots of nuts, lots of seeds, lots of oil, lots of green vegetables, and very, very low in fruit, aka a very high fat diet, a low carbohydrate diet. So it doesn't matter if you're a vegan or a raw vegan or a vegetarian or eating McDonald's, if you eat a high fat diet, you're going to go downhill eventually. So this is Susan's daily diet, the high fat diet, as I said. And here, Susan said she's eating a high carbohydrate diet. Susan's daily diet. This is from page 32 of her book. I start the day with green juice mixed with cayenne pepper to wake me up. It works as well as caffeine without the downside. Or a super smoothie with kale, orange juice, one banana, two tablespoons of bee pollen, one pinch of cayenne pepper, and four tablespoons of cacao nibs. I would be off my face if I ate that. Okay, next snack. She loves her chocolate. The snack recipe includes peanut butter chocolate cups and peppermint patties. Ingredients include cacao, coconut butter, agave or honey, peanut butter, dehydrated coconut, mint extract, etc. Lunch is a salad with minimal or no dressing. Sometimes add soaked olives or dehydrated sunflower seeds. Dinner is a raw soup with the uh, raw soup. All recipes include salt, spices, avocado, nuts, or olive oil. Sometimes more than one. Or Susan eats leftover gourmet dishes she has, she has from around the weekend. Occasionally she just has an avocado or a couple of pieces of produce. So that's fat for breakfast, fat for lunch, fat for snacks, fat for dinner, with a few stimulants in there from the cacao and the uh, cayenne pepper. So no wonder Susan Schenk said when she was on a 99% vegan diet, she experienced mental fog, fatigue, irritability, and depression, and her binge prone tendencies that made her want to eat a caloric restricted diet. And I don't blame her because I couldn't survive on that high fat stimulant, you know, low carb fruit phobic diet. I'd go crazy as well. So I don't blame her for failing on that. You know, nobody can live on that diet. This is insane. It's dangerous. You know, it's a dangerous diet. And no wonder people go, oh, I did a real vegan diet, 99%. And, uh, you know, I, 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 went off, I went AWOL, mate. It's like, yeah, you will when you're eating so much fat. Plant fat's better than animal fat. It's better than cooked, but it's still. You don't want to have too much of it. Lots of carbohydrates from sweet fruit, and that is the secret to a raw vegan diet. Not this fruit phobic, drug dependent, fatted out, or Hollywood craziness. And Susan Schenk quoted a study done by Stanley Bass. Stanley Bass put some mice on a fruitarian diet, and the mice went crazy and ate each other, and they ate the brains of their fellow mice compatriots. And you know, Stanley Bass formed the conclusion that a fruitarian diet isn't good for humans. And Susan Shank said, that makes no sense at all. But why? Because mice and rats, they're carnivorous, they'll eat each other. So to conclude that humans can't be fruit eaters because mice can't is to make the same conclusion that humans should eat other humans because mice eat other mice. It makes no sense at all. But if you look at the amino acid requirements of a mouse or a rat, they require 10 essential amino acids. Humans only require eight essential amino acids. Next point, Susan said she had to eat eggs because she had low B12. But she never had a B12 levels test before she uh, went on this 99% vegan diet. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like me saying, 
I left my wallet at someone's house, and when I got the wallet back, there was some money missing. And then someone says, well, how much money was in there to start with, Harley? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know, but I, I think it must have been a lot of money. You know, so I was saying, oh, I've got B12 deficiency, but I didn't have a check beforehand, but I must have been okay before. I've got friends who eat raw animal products every day, almost every meal, and we've checked their serum B12, and it's always been low. We've checked their homocysteine, some of them, and it's always been high. So if raw animal products cured B12 deficiency, then we wouldn't see people with B12 deficiency who eat raw animal products, but we do, we see it a lot. Also, Susan Schenk in the photo, she's holding bananas. If, but she says bananas are bad, so why not hold up a picture of a dead fish or half a pig's head? And uh, so I find that quite interesting. And another point is, is Susan Schenk's not even an athlete. She's sure she's probably a lovely lady. I've never met Susan. I'm sure she's a lovely lady. I'm sure she's watching this, so pay attention if you are, Susan. She's not even an athlete, and she's saying she didn't get enough protein on a vegan diet. Me, you know, running marathons and winning 24-hour mountain bike races. I've cycled over 170,000 kilometers as a vegan. So when someone, a non-athlete, says, I didn't get enough protein, I have to ask, how many grams of protein are you getting as a 99% vegan? And how many grams of protein are you getting now? And 100% of the time, the answer is, I don't know. So how can we really objectify if we don't even know? Another thing I find is that when people do drugs, you know what I mean, like cacao or ayahuasca or smoke a lot of the bongs, I think their mental clarity and giving health advice is a bit skewed. So I say, if you want to give health advice, great, but put down the bongs, put down the magic mushrooms, put down the acid trips, put down the ayahuasca, put down the peyote and all these things and start clarifying your brain rather than being on a drug high before you give a health advice and that's, the, that's my little secret there. So again, just because someone eats meat or does drugs doesn't make them a bad person. You know, my mum eats meat, I'll still love her. Uh, but the reason why I'm speaking out about this is because I want people to get the right information when they go on a plant-based diet so they don't end up doing a, a Susan Schenk and doing a 99% vegan and doing a high-fat diet when they think they're doing low-fat and just hitting, hitting rock bottom. Another point is Susan believes in breatharians. breatharians you know what I mean? So <laughs> once you believe in breatharians, you're going downhill already. There's no such thing as breatharians. People say, Harley, what about Jass Machine? It's like Jass Machine got debunked in 60 Minutes in Australia years ago. Um, you know, Wiley Brooks says, eat Big Macs and drink Diet Coke. He's just visit his website. So, breatharianism's BS. Absolute BS. It's, it's just another form of anorexia in the health food movement. So, that's my advice, is uh, take advice and people getting the results you desire. If you want to be a fit, healthy, vegan or raw vegan, take advice and fit, healthy, raw vegans versus people who are doing drugs, who are 99% vegan or who are vegetarian vegans and whatever that means. So again, you know, it's... Uh, just take advice and the people getting the results you desire and judge by results, not by theory. And some people say, Harley, you shouldn't judge people. You should just be accepting and just be quiet and just stand there and say, yay, you know, just whatever. I say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to judge because I expect people to judge me. I judge others. Judging is an innate human desire. If you don't judge, you die. And people say who don't judge. That's BS. They're either lying or they're boring. So I say judge, question what's encouraged, and just look closely at what people are doing, you know what I mean? Ask for objective information versus subjective. So Susan said to Kevin Johnny, she talks about how she craved eggs and she ate them for B12. And then Kevin Johnny says, did your B12 levels go up? And Susan Schenk says, no. Interesting, that one. Susan says, we've been eating meat for two and a half million years. Um, well, how come you can't just walk up to an animal and bite it in the face like a real carnivore can? Because that's the last time I checked, tigers, dogs, cats, they can all do that. But humans, we have to, uh, you know, sort of do it in slaughterhouses and pay people to do things we'd never do. And if we did do them, we wouldn't want to do them in public because, uh, you know, people would think we're crazy psychopaths. We have animals as pets. Um, it's not idealism, it's just human instinct. Is uh, You eat animal products, your health goes downhill. And the more animal products you eat, the worse your health gets. Just look at the people who eat the most animal products versus the people who eat the most plants. That's, that's an interesting one. So B12 didn't go up after consuming animal products, which is common because, like I said before, all my friends who eat animal products, they uh, have low B12, the ones who are in the raw, in, raw scene. So Susan says, we're meant to eat meat, but then she says, I put the meat in the dehydrator overnight so it doesn't look so raw. Last time I checked, tigers, cats and dogs didn't have to do that one. 
Again, Susan says she ate a 99% vegan diet and got a B12 deficiency, but she's 99% vegan. Interesting. She never had her B12 levels checked before she started her 99% vegan diet. So, you know, who knows what we can think. And she said, Susan says, I felt like I felt a lot of brain fog and my memory was going downhill. No wonder, Susan, look at the high fat diet you're eating that was full of stimulants from the cacao and cayenne pepper. It's definitely going to make your brain foggy because your glycogen is going to be so low from your glucose exhausted diet. What else we got here? Susan Schenk says that 99% of the fresh produce in the United States is irradiated. I don't know about that one. I mean, I just cringe when I hear breatharian wannabes who, uh, who flop on a high fat diet that was 99% vegan giving advice to others on how to do a raw vegan diet. It just, it just makes me cringe. It's like me giving advice how to drive a Formula One car when I'm driving a golf buggy. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's insane. So, I've seen people die, I've seen people commit suicide, I've seen people become obese, I've seen people become emaciated, binge-prone, depressed, weak individuals because they've tried to follow this fruit-phobic, carbohydrate-phobic, you know, high-fat, drug-dependent, cacao-gobbling, aoeshka slurping, bong-puffing, magic mushroom-popping, LSD-flipping, you know, peyote-purging, freak-out diet on calorie restriction where the ultimate aim is to become a breatharian, you know, I've I, I got to say something, you know, because I'm, I'm sick and tired of people becoming sick and tired on these crazy fad diets where fruit's the enemy, but eat as much honey as you want and uh, don't have to do any exercise, just sit down and eat heaps of raw meat and steak and you'll become super fit. Well, hey, you know, I advise people, look at the people in the health movement today who are the fittest and, you know, the strongest, and where are they? They're the raw vegans, the vegans, people on veganbodybuilding.com, or, you know, myself doing a lot of bike races, or Mark Arnstein doing a lot of running races, and Scott Spitz, and uh, Scott Jurek, the ultra-marathon vegan athlete. If you want advice, take advice from people like us, and uh, versus the people who are sitting around smoking bongs all day, selling you bullshit, um, and telling you to calorie restrict. It's, it's insane. So, again, everyone's nice. I don't believe in evil people. I just believe in bad choices. So I want to give advice to people just so they can make good choices. Because again, I believe everyone's deep down is a great person. And uh, you know, if I'm going to point the finger, I'm going to offer the other hand as some help. So I always want to help people.